Now, can you feel that Piba foam? Can you feel any magic in the shoe? Well, yes you can, but. So testing is complete and the scores are in and this is the full review of the Hoka Skyward X. But before we get into it, a big shout out to my number one running store, The Running Company at Geelong. I've got a link to their website in the description. Make sure you go check out that and check out all their running gear. And also guys, if you want to support this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Right, so checking out our quick specs. Now the Skyward X is a neutral super trainer from Hoka. Now it's coming in at a crazy high price. So $370 here in Australia. Now that is the same price as an Alpha Flyer, just to put it in perspective. So $225 uh, in the US. Now weight wise, it's just under the 300 gram mark, 10.4 ounces. Now that's in my size. So this is a US 8.5. Now in the stack, 48 in the rear, 43 in the front, and that's gonna give us a five millimeter drop. So for the scores, in the price. So I think this is probably the most overpriced shoe from one of the big brands that I think I've ever seen. So I don't think there's much value in it, especially for the performance that that shoe gives you. Three out of 10. And in the weight, for such a big shoe, it actually doesn't feel that heavy on the foot. Seven out of 10. So in the upper here, material that they're using is a flat knit. Now this material is quite thick, so the breathability could be better. However, this material, it's very comfortable. So it's just flexible enough uh, to make it conform around the foot, but it's also got enough structure, so to not make it feel sloppy. Uh, in the heel counter, very structured heel counter here, so it's as solid as a tank there. They've got a big plastic cap on the end of it. Uh, padding wise though, around the heel collar, I'm gonna say it's about a medium amount of padding. Uh, and in the tongue though, about a plush amount of padding on the tongue, big fluffy padded tongue that is not gusseted. Uh, the lacing system that they use, they've got a bit of a combo thing going on here. So they've got eyelets at the bottom, then they've got these lace loops up towards the top that actually tie in. It's got a bit of a midfoot, internal midfoot strap. Uh, but the lockdown in this shoe, really good, no issues whatsoever. I've had no issues with the laces coming undone as well. Uh, now the fit in this, is true to size for me. So this is the first hoker that has fit me true to size in the length that hasn't been too narrow. So that is really amazing. It's great to see from Hoka. The build quality in this shoe as well is excellent. So again, well done there Hoka. And the stepping comfort, really, really nice as well. So overall here in the upper, there is probably not too much not to like for me. It probably just could be a little bit more breathable. Nine out of 10. We got a good amount of rubber coverage, uh, which you would expect on your training shoe because we need to get that durability up. But this rubber compound that they use, it's quite similar. It's probably the same one as what they use in the Mac X's, which I've just recently tested. So it's more of a softer compound. It's quite sticky in the dry, so very, very nice. And in the wet, it does a pretty good job as well. Now, durability wise, for a soft rubber, it's holding up quite well. So I have got some signs of wear here and here in my usual spots, but it's certainly, it's not wearing down as fast as what I think a softer rubber uh, would do. So, so especially like the, some of those rubber compounds that they use in the New Balance and the Nike, this one is actually holding up surprisingly well. Now also on the outsoles, what you can see, we've got a bit of, we've got a big channel running right through the middle of the shoe, which is really good. That's obviously, uh, it's gonna bring the weight down on the shoe. It's also gonna just let this midsole splay and just add to the ride of this shoe. We've also got a bit of a window here through the bottom where you can see that exposed carbon plate and there's super foam through the middle. Now what this outsole uh, has come into a few little issues for me. I've got some seeds and some little stones caught in this part of the tread pattern here. And I've also had the odd rock to get it, getting caught here. But overall, it's a pretty good outsole. My only drama is, is catching a few little seeds and so forth, eight out of 10. And in the midsole here, so this is where all the tech is happening in this shoe. So first of all, they're using their premium Piba Super Foam. And it is, it's full length as well. However, it's not the entirety of the shoe. So it's just in the footbed of the shoe. And I'll put a graphic up on the screen now, just so you can see what's going on inside the shoe. So yeah, super, uh, full length uh, Super Foam footbed. Now under that, they have got a convex carbon plate and it's in the shape of a H 
Why is it in the shape of a H? Well, it's gonna let the shoe move sort of independently. So from the lateral side to the medial side, if one side can come up, then the other side can come down. So it's not gonna be super rigid like a normal carbon plate will. If, if the shoe tilts this way, then it's gonna bring the whole carbon plate with it. So nice little addition there. Now housing that the Piba foam and the carbon plate, they've got a carrier foam and it's their super critical EVA frame is what they're using. And that's just sort of holding everything together and it's obviously going to give this shoe a little bit more durability uh, than if they were just using their Piba foam. So it just encases everything. Uh, now this foam, it feels pretty soft and compliant to the touch. Now geometry wise, we have got a four foot rocker. Now this rocker is in a different spot for a Hoka shoe. Normally they've got an early stage meta rocker, which sort of starts about here. But in the Skywood X, it's a very late rocker, especially for a Hoka. So it's right up towards uh, the end of the toes and it's quite an aggressive tip forward as well. And how does all that tech translate into the ride? Well, the first word that comes to mind is dense. So a very dense feeling shoe, certainly not expected. Now it is a smooth ride, so it's, it feels really efficient and smooth. So through the foot strike, however, it's certainly not soft. So if you're gonna buy this shoe thinking it's gonna be cloud-like, cushy, pillowy, uh, pretty much what the website says it's going to be, or plush, it's not that. Well, it's certainly not that for me. It's certainly on the firmer side. So in comparison to other shoes on the market, this is, yeah, this is certainly on the firmer side. Is it cushioned? Yeah, as I said, it's really cushioned. Uh, you're really protected from the rain, as you can see from all that foam there. However, yeah, it's just not soft. Now, can you feel that Piba foam? Can you feel any magic in the shoe? Well, yes, you can, but you have to put lots and lots of force into the shoe. So myself, I'm not a very heavy runner. I'm just over 60 kilos. It's hard for me to feel the bounce and the pop that this Piba actually brings to the shoe. So if you're a heavy runner though, I think you're gonna find it a lot more compliant and a lot more bouncy, certainly than what I can. For me, the ride reminds me of the Nimbus 25. So that FF Blast Plus Eco Cushion, uh, it's actually that really dense cushion type feeling, so not much energy return, but super protected from the road, no road feel. That's what this one feels like to me, even though it should feel more because it's got a plate, it's got super foam. Um, yeah, but it just doesn't. Now stability wise, it's best to run in this one always on an even surface because if you catch this one wrong with this huge stack height, it's a long way to fall off. I've done it before, it's definitely an ankle breaker. So if you catch this one wrong, it's a long way to fall. And because it's so rigid on the sides, there's not real, once you go past that tipping point, it goes down hard. So just be careful about that one. Now scores wise, now the ride is nice. However, it's not amazing. You would expect more from a shoe that's got all this tech in it. You've got super foam, you've got your plate, and you've got a big, nice rocker in the shoe. For me, it should deliver more, but it doesn't. Seven and a half out of 10. Best use here, so certainly your easy pace runs, your recovery runs, and certainly your long runs. This one is really gonna save the legs. As I said, it's really, really efficient. Certainly not a workout shoe or a fast shoe. And who is this shoe best for? So certainly you heavier runners are gonna get the most out of this shoe. You're gonna get more out of this shoe than what I can. As I said, if you're a little bit heavier or the heavier are, the more you're probably gonna get out of the shoe. You're gonna be able to squish into this foam. It's probably gonna feel soft and you're gonna get some bounce. So I think this shoe is really gonna work for you guys. Obviously, you're, you lighter runners, you're gonna probably get the same experience as what I feel. It's probably gonna feel firm and a little bit uninspiring. So some other options out there if you're considering the Skywood X. So the first shoe I'll mention is the Asics Nimbus. So the 25 or the 26. So I'm saying that is because the feedback of the foam for me and where this rocker is placed is, is most similar to that shoe. Uh, the Nimbus is certainly going to feel softer and it's not as rigid because it doesn't have a plate. However, same type of dense feeling. Another shoe is the New Balance Super Comp Trainer V2. So that shoe is going to be a lot softer than this shoe. However, it's a carbon plated shoe and it is very rocked. So if you are a lighter type runner, then that shoe will probably, 
you'll probably get along with that shoe uh, far better than what you will in this shoe. That's if you value a nice soft ride. And I'll also mention the Mizuno Neo Vista. So if you're in the market for a super trainer, for me, the Neo Vista is the best on the market. Much softer than this one, much bouncier, much more fun, and it is easier to run in. So this shoe has really been let down by the recommended retail price. Performance wise, it's actually not a bad shoe. It's not an amazing shoe and it's not, yeah, it's, as I said, it's not a bad shoe. It's an okay shoe, it's a pretty good shoe. Is it worth $370? Not a chance. Its performance is on par with shoes that are about $100 cheaper. So certainly it's definitely not a buy at that price. Now if this shoe becomes discounted and it becomes down to the level like $100 cheaper where those other shoes sit, then it's certainly worth to consider especially if you're one of those heavier runners, you're gonna get a lot out of this shoe, but at $370 at an Alpha Fire price, it's definitely not even worth considering. There's other options out there. And that definitely reflects in the score there, as you can see. Now, if I put this on the leaderboard, it pretty much drops all the way down to the bottom. And again, and it's just let down by the price. So that is really unfortunate. As I said, it's not a bad shoe, it's just way overpriced. So anyway, guys, that is it from me. Interested to hear your thoughts on my full review of the Skyward X. If you've got any questions or you want to comment on anything about this review, how it compares to anything else, please just let me know in the comments below. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.